We are putting a living shoreline on the ground at the Center for Inland Bays uh, near Indian River Inlet in Delaware. The whole goal of these projects is really to help us enhance the ecology, better fish and wildlife habitat, better oyster mussel habitat, which promotes water quality benefits because those bivalves filter so much water, and mostly, though, to stabilize eroding shorelines. And, uh, we're very excited about this. It is going to be a lower energy project. It is one of the big goals is to actually spread awareness of what a living shoreline looks like, what, how it functions. So we're doing it in a very visible area. And this particular project has two different, two different treatment cells with slightly different goals. The one that you're going to be filming today is actually in front of an area that's already been riprap. It already has rocks on the shoreline to protect the buildings that are here at, the, at this marina. And so uh, we are trying to not just stabilize the erosion, but here we're trying to actually green up the riprap wall to actually rebuild vegetation in front of the riprap, which promotes additional strength and resilience, but also should enhance the ecology because riprap is not very good habitat for most fish species. Uh, we're gonna be putting in another living shoreline just slightly down the shore here, and that is designed to uh, really stabilize and enhance the marsh edge, which is being torn up by erosion from waves. The main goal of this, this type of tactic we're working on, the Delsey tactic, is to provide plants and ribbed mussels. Ribbed mussels are these mussels that live in mutualism with Spartina grass. And the mussels actually attach to the roots of the plants very, very tightly with these little hair-like thistle threads. Strongest super glue in the world. And they bind it up very tightly and it actually forms like a living seawall. And so we're actually trying to uh, put in these coconut fiber logs that are a byproduct of the coconut industry that get recycled. And because they're, they're hair-like fibers, these core logs are good attachment surfaces for the mussels to attach to, just like they would naturally attach to the roots and rhizomes of the plant matter. So by putting these logs out before mussel larvae are in the water column, before they naturally recruit onto plants, we'll be able to catch some natural mussel recruitment. And we're also going to be planting these logs and the areas that fill in behind the logs with uh, natural marsh plants. So over the next year, we expect that the area that will first look like just a couple logs on the beach will fill in with mud and sand behind it, will plant, and within a year, if it's anything like other, other projects that we've done, you won't even be able to hardly see the logs or anything. You'll just see grass in the future, and that promotes buffering for whatever's landward, whether it's a natural salt marsh or built infrastructure. Salt marshes and coastal wetlands are one of the signature habitats of the Delaware Estuary and the Center for Inland Bays. These habitats are very, very, very important for so many reasons, and most people know this, but not many people actually know that we're losing an acre per day of coastal wetlands in the Delaware Estuary, an acre per day. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. It's not just climate change, it's many other things. But losing an acre per day is going to become uh, very worrisome into the future because we only have so many acres. And once you lose those coastal wetland habitats, then you lose the coastal armoring, flood protection for coastal communities, as well as you're going to see a decrease in fish and shellfish production and probably a decrease in water quality because these coastal wetlands are sinks for many types of pollutants. And living shorelines are not the magic bullet. They're not going to solve all the world's problems with coastal wetland loss. But it's one of many different types of tactics that we believe that we've seen in our projects can actually arrest or stem the erosion rate along the edges of salt marshes. And in our projects in New Jersey that we first put on the ground in 2008, they weathered Hurricane Irene. They weathered Tropical Storm Lee, and most recently, we saw no visible impairment of our projects from Hurricane Sandy. Meanwhile, right next to our projects, the bulkheads, the riprap were all torn up. And those habitats and buildings are gone in behind those bulkheads. And so living shorelines do appear to help stem erosion of salt marshes. They enhance the ecology, as opposed to bulkheads, which degrade the ecology. And they seem to hold up pretty well in, in the increasing energy but we're really excited because we think that this is yet another alternative that property owners or state agencies have, coastal communities have, to do things that enhance the ecology, not degrade the ecology, but also reach the goals that are so important, which is coastal flood protection, 
fish and wildlife habitat and water quality.